welcome in. It is day 333 and you're speaking to the Meeples Champion. And today we're going to be going over a small flip and write card game. It is a pretty simple one. The game is called Silver and Gold. Now, the concept of the game is that you're going to have a whole bunch of different treasure cards you're after. You're going to be shuffling these cards out and dealing two to every player, and then four face up in the middle. Then you're going to have eight different different style cards of how you're going to dig for this treasure. You're going to shuffle this deck of eight cards up, remove one at random from the game, and put the other seven in the center. One by one, you're going to flip these over, and everybody at the same time is going to take the symbol and try to add it to one of their cards. You're going to cross off that symbol. So you might have a an L shape, a block, a block, a block, a block, you know, three down, one, one or more to the left. You can put it in any direction you want, but it has to fit fully into your area. Now, while you're doing this, there are things you can be crossing off. You could be crossing off X's. If you cross an X off, you immediately get to cross off one bonus spot on any of the cards you own. You could be crossing off a palm tree. If you do your writing in the number for that palm tree over to the left and your palm tree scoring area, which will help you later in the game. You could be crossing off a coin, which means you're gonna go over to your coin scoring area and you're gonna cross the coin off that is in the top leftmost area that is currently not crossed off. So you go to the top row, you'll cross off one, two, three, four, then you'll go to the next row, one, two, three, four, and you're gonna keep doing it like that. Now, you're gonna go through until you've finished all seven cards. If you have a card pulled out and you can't fit it somewhere, or you don't want to put it somewhere, you can choose to, instead of putting the symbol in, just cross off one single X somewhere on a card you own. At the end of the round, you're going to now begin to figure out what can, you, what can you do. If you completed any of your cards completely, that will move to your scored area, and you will pick a new card, either one of the four exposed or the one off the top. Otherwise, you're going to basically figure out the points for the round, you're going to take the eighth card, shuffle the cards again, put them down seven, one to the side, you're going to make sure that the top row is set, everybody has their cards in front of them, you should have two active treasure cards thereafter, and you're going to play a second round. You're going to do this four times. Now at the end of the fourth round, you're going to start counting up your points. The points are scored from four different areas. You have anything from the coins. You get one spot per coin that you completed. Plus, whenever you finish up a round and you've managed to get an entire row, you get to claim a trophy. So you'll claim the trophy and write that number in. So there's only so many trophies, so some people might get all the trophies early, even though other people might end up getting no trophies but got way more of that treasure symbol based on how they did in the late game. So you're going to have all that, and that's going to determine one scoring. Then you're going to have the cards you completed. So anything that you completed is going to be scoring. There's also going to be scoring in the top right of cards, which is going to show you some kind of a symbol. So it might be that you completed a card, so you're going to get it scoring in the top left. You got 12 points for it, but it also says in the top right, you will additionally score one point for every gray colored treasure map that you complete. So now you look through your completed and go, oh, I got three of these. I get three additional points. So that's your setup. You get your scoring for your treasure maps. You get your scoring for your bonuses on your treasure maps. You get your scoring for your coins, and you get your scoring for the trophies you get for your coins, as well as whatever it is you got in palm trees. You add everything together, you see who won. It's a very simple game. It shouldn't take too long. But why don't we jump in, let's talk about our seven categories and see where this game lands for us. <laughs> When it comes to the art, the art's not bad. It's actually an okay box, and it's nice color on the cards. If this was a big game, I think I'd be a little bit more complaining about it, but it's a small card game. It's meant to just grab the eyes and be simple in its area. I think it does a good job for what it is. It's a thumbs up. Your components. Your components are all cards, and of course you got your little dry erase pen that you're going to be using on everything. I think that it's all really good quality. Dry erase seems to be okay, although that's one of those ones that you, you tend to know as time goes on if that's going to be a good or a bad company. I tend to buy really good dry erase pens to the side for all my games because I find that no game puts out a legitimately great one. The best I've seen was from Twilight Inscription, and even they had an extremely tough one to clean. So for me, uh, that I try to ignore that for most games because I know it's hard to hit on those. But the cards are fantastic quality. Thumbs up. Your price. There's games out there. You could find this at Targets. 
You can find this at your Walmarts or your Barnes and Noble. You can find it in three, four out of five board game stores. It's online and it's about fifteen dollars. It's cheap. It's available. It's great. Thumbs up. Your difficulty. This isn't one that's too difficult for a kid to play. I think beginners would love it. Experienced may not want to play this too often, but I think it's one they can play with their families and with friends. And experts, same area, you know, a lot fewer of them are going to want to play this, but it's a flip and right. And for people who are an expert player and love flip and rights, this game's fine. So for me, that's a thumbs up. Replayability. This game goes quick. Doing seven flips three times, that's 21 flips. You're going to be done with this in less than a minute per flip, which means it's going to be under 21 minutes to play the game. Yes, toss in an extra five minutes for scoring, so maybe almost 30 minutes in total for one game. You can play this various times in a row. This is an easy, you know, lunchtime grab, after school grab, after work grab, play it on the weekends. I think this has plenty of replayability. Thumbs up. <laughs> keys to victory so when you're doing this how are you trying to attack the sheets are you trying to chain are you going to do your very first placement make sure you get an x and then chain all your x's try to get them off quick or are you trying to ignore all those and you're trying to border it it's about how you attack and then how you focus on what's at the top what's your long game are you completing a card and going after a bunch of color and you see there's a card over here that's going to score for oranges let me keep grabbing the oranges because it's going to make those less appealing for my opponents and then I might have a chance to grab that and get a bunch of bonus points at the end. Or you might be the person who sees somebody doing that approach and says, well, this one's only going to score me 10 points, but if I snag it, it's going to save them from getting an additional three. I'd rather do that. So I think there's plenty of keys here. There's a lot of ways to attack this board. Thumbs up. Is the game unique? It's a cool little game, but I have seen a bunch of these games that are, you know, activate something from a, a roll and write, a flip and write, whatever it may be, something right. And by marking a spot, it allows you to do something else. And to me, that's what's unique about this game, which means it's not unique. It's a great game. It's a fantastic theme. They've done a good job putting it together, packaging it. I just don't feel the game stands out that much from a lot of the other flip and write, roll and write, whatever you may find right games out there. So for me, it has to be thumbs down. Overall, what do I think? It's a fun little game. It's worth something to add to your collection. It's not too much money. I wouldn't even worry about playing it before you buy it. As long as you know that you like a flip and write, or you just know that you don't dislike one, just take the shot. It's not that much money. In worst case, it doesn't hit for you, and you give it as a present to a kid or a friend. Well, it has been day 333, and we've been speaking about the game Silver and Gold. And you've been speaking to the Meeples Champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description where I'll be adding an Amazon link in case you want to get this game for your collection. And don't forget to jump onto Board Game Arena where you can find me under the name The Meeples Champion. Send me over a game request, a friend request. I try to jump on a couple times a day. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.